Before we actually get started with keeping up to date with search alerts, I wanted to just recap a little bit on our comprehensive review or comprehensive search. We know that the literature review search process can be long and complicated. So often we'll do a comprehensive review in chunks and we need to keep track of that type of searching. This Excel chart documents the history of the search process. It includes the relevance of the search results. It also includes the databases that you've been into. It includes the search statements, the results, maybe, maybe the amount of results, the date that you did the searches, etc. I find this useful because we're hopping in and out of different databases across time and so it's hard to remember what searches you did when. And so useful for yourself to keep up to date with but also useful as a tool to show your supervisor in terms of the types of searches you've been doing and the results you've captured. If you're interested in using this search tracker, the template is listed here, is available here from this website, from the AIRS website. It's really important to be effective and efficient and to save time. So how are we going to do that? We've already looked at some really great tips in terms of being a comprehensive expert searcher. However, how do we automate some of this as well? So we can create these things called search alerts. And there's two that I'd like to look at today. Firstly, the table of contents search alerts, sorry, table of contents alerts, or we call them TOCs for short. You can set up alerts so that the table of contents pages from specific journals are emailed automatically to you. And these are from the newest issues of those journals. Many databases have this feature. You can also go directly to almost all the publishers' websites and sign up for table of contents that way. Today I actually want to show you a table of contents service through a database called Current Contents Connect. It's on the Web of Science platform. Whatever database you use to create or publisher's site to create a table of contents alert or in fact a database search alert, you're going to have to register for the service. So when you get into the database or the publisher's website, look for something that says register or log in, sign up, that sort of thing. I've chosen Web of Science as, and Current Contents Connect as a database because you can create table of contents on, within this database to multiple journal titles, which is nice and nifty. And the other reason is that it's multidisciplinary. So it'll have lots and lots of journals, thousands of journals, in fact, that might be appropriate across disciplines. So let's hop across now to the library website. The other thing that you need to note about Current Contents Connect and when you're creating a registration for to actually get the table of contents sent to you is that it's a bit fussy and it's a bit fussy in terms of the browser. So in the initial period when you're registering you need to be in Internet Explorer. So if you're not in Internet Explorer please go to Internet Explorer and get yourself to the library page. After you've done the initial registration the database doesn't seem to mind which browser you use, but for this initial um, registration, you'll need to use Internet Explorer. View all databases and click on See for Current Contents Connect. Scrolling right down the bottom to Current Contents Connect via Web of Science. Note it is a table of contents and citation information from leading scholarly journals and books. 
allowing you to keep up to date with the latest publications in your field. Coverage is from 1998 onwards. So you can search this particular database just as an ordinary search. What you'll want to do here is to click on the down arrow where it says Jenny, because I'm already logged in, you want to look for something that says register. So I'm going to give you a moment to register for this service. You'll notice that there's a multi-level password as well. So take that time now to do that. You will note that when we click on searches and alerts, there's various different there's various types of searches and alerts. So you can save your searches and alerts, such as this particular search statement. You could do save citation alerts on an article, on an author, or we can do journal alerts, which is the one we're going to do now. So we're going to create table of contents journal alerts give that a click. And what we're looking for now is add journals. My screen has quite a lot of journals that I, quite a few are inactive actually, but quite a few journals that I've been interested over the time. Yours may not have any there if you're the first time user, but we want to go add journals. I'm just going to search on higher education. You can type in either a keyword or you can type in the whole journal name here and just simply search. You can see that I've got a whole list. In fact, I've got 26 journals that might be of use in higher education. I'm very interested in active learning, so I'm just going to click on Add to my alerts, the checkbox adjacent to active learning in higher education, and that is created now, a table of contents alert to this particular journal. The next time that journal is published, an issue is published, I will get an email with the contents of that particular journal. So this is good. This is going to keep us up to date in that area and also alert us to when new articles are published in that particular journal but also we may not have picked it up in our searching so it's as soon as it's published that it, it gets sent out to you. I want to just jump across back across into the resource log. So where does the content intersect with what's expected of you in your resource log? So you can see here module five, it's six marks, it's search alerts. So set up either a journal table of contents alert or one keyword search alert. So we've just done a table of contents alert. This would be putting the journal name here and which database you use to create that journal table of contents. Also, the second aspect is why did you choose this particular journal or search alert? Explain the significance of the journal in your field and to your research. That's another aspect of that question. The second alert tool I want to overview is the database search alerts. These are good for keeping up to date on a topic from a range of sources and I really like to use this because often I think I've created a really great search in say Scopus or EBSCO or one of those databases and I want to save it. So I want to save it to the server within the database. That's a good thing, that's number one because I can go back in there and edit that and resend. I don't have to type everything out again. But secondly, I could set up a database search alert so that every time that database is updated with material resources that match my search alert, 
I'll get an email to my to my account saying these are the new records that have been added to the database that match your search statement. I think that's great. So a search alert is a keyword search automatically run at specific intervals and emailed to you. These databases and others provide this sort of feature. So Google Scholar does too, so I'm going to do two different searches to show how to set up a database search alert. We're going to go across to Google Scholar first. The one I'm going to look at is chocolate. So it's done a search. Google Scholar has done a search on chocolate and we can see that that's in the title. Note down the side, left hand side, I can create a, an alert. So when you click on that, you can see the alert query is in title. So a search will be run regularly on that whenever a, a results occur with chocolate in the title you'll get an email to your specified email here that there are more um, more res more material being published in that area really good strategy if we flip back now to our search in uh, web of science current contents connect I've done a previous search on higher education and information literacy. It's a quick search, it's a topic search, and I just want to click on search here. This is just showing how you can create an alert on that particular search statement. And you probably want to modify it more than what I have, but you can click on create an alert. If you clicked on that, you give it the alert a name so that you're not getting confused with your searches and then create alert. You can see that utilizing these sorts of features of databases are going to be very helpful in one keeping you up to date but being efficient, effective and saving you time. Lastly, periodic searching. Sometimes databases, not often, but sometimes databases don't offer alerts. So you need to manually run searches at various intervals on those databases. So you'll need to adopt an organized approach to searching over the period of your study. You want to lessen the possibility that you're missing important works and that will do that for you. You will find a dis this disciplined approach once adopted will make you more efficient user of time and reduce any research anxiety as well. Note that you are, we'll go back to the resource log and we'll just have one more look at if you decided just to do a keyword search alert you would put the alert statement here, so the search alert statement. So if this is my search alert, I would pull this across, copy it, and pop it into paste. Or I might have created a, a table of contents for a journal name. It's one or the other, you don't need to do both. But if you are doing a search alert statement in a database, we need to see the search statement and then list which database you did that in. And of course, the same applies. It is giving a justification for why this is an important search alert. Okay, so I think that brings us to the fact that there is an activity, so if you wanted to create a table of contents alert, please do so in either Current Contents Connect, if you didn't follow along with me, or there is a journal Tox as well, or any of the publishers' websites, and set up a table of contents alert. Thank you. I'll see you next time.